Hey, what's up, Akuo? Welcome back to the next service. I'm so glad you guys are tuning in. If you're new here, my name is Abel. I'm the worship leader here at Akuo. And I just want to welcome you guys for, for believing that you can encounter God here with us. And I just got to say, it's a big day today. Huge day for us. We've hit double digits, guys. We've hit 10 services. That's so incredible. And, and like Humby and I just freak out every once in a while. But the reason being that we made it this far is that we have a God who's on our side. And if there's anyone who wants us to succeed, it's God. Because if this church was built on the foundation of Humby and I's intelligence, we'd be in trouble, guys. So you guys just keep believing, keep showing up. It's so incredible to see all the things that God is doing and moving with in this community. So let's just pray that we hear his voice and worship him for who he is. Come on. My heart is overwhelmed if my heart is overwhelmed and i cannot hear your voice i'll hold on to what is true though i cannot see though the storms of life they come and the road ahead gets steep i will lift these hands in praise I will believe, I'll remind myself, I'll remind myself of all that you've done, and the life I have because of your son. Love came down, and love came down and rescued me, love came down and set me free, and I am yours. I am forever yours And mountain high, oh valley low I sing out, remind my soul That I am yours I am forever yours When my heart is filled with hope And every promise comes my way When I feel your hands of grace rest upon me I'm staying desperate for you God I'm staying humbled at your feet I will lift these hands in praise I will believe come on we'll remind ourselves I'll remind myself of all that you've done and the life I have because of your son Love came down And love came down and rescued me Love came down and set me free And I am yours I am forever yours Mountain high or valley low Mountain high or valley low I'll sing out, remind my soul that I am yours, I am forever yours, and I am yours, I am yours, for all my days, Jesus, I am yours, cause I am yours, I am yours, for all my days, Jesus, I Lift that up, cause I am yours, and I am yours for all my days. Jesus, I am yours, and I am yours, and I am yours for all my days. Jesus, I am. And I am yours, and I am yours for all my 
days, Jesus, I am yours. And love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. And I am yours. I am forever yours. And mountain high, oh valley low, I'll sing out, remind my soul that I am yours. I am forever yours. Oh, I am yours. I am forever yours. And I am yours. I am forever yours. Forever sinking deep in mercy, see I'm wide away, drawing close, stood by grace, and all my heart is yours. All fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into. Your love, oh, your love. Come on, when we're lost, He pursues us first. When I'm lost, you pursue me. Lift my head to see your glory, Lord of all, so beautiful. Here in you I find shelter, captivated by the splendor of your face. My secret place, I'm wide away, drawing close. By grace, and all my heart is yours. Oh, fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love. No. over me your face is all I seek you are my everything Jesus Christ you are my one desire Lord hear my only cry to know you all my life you love so Washing over me, your face is all I seek. You are my everything, Jesus Christ. You are my one desire, Lord. Hear my only cry to know you all my life. I'm wise. Drawing close, stood by grace, and all my heart is yours. Oh, fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love.
Father, we just thank you so much for this precious time that we have, Lord. To cry out your name, Jesus. And I just pray that your love wash over every single person that is tuning in, over the families that are represented here, that we just sink deep into your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness, Father. So God, let that be our cry. Let that be the cry of our heart, that we can be with you, that we can see your glory and worship you forever, Lord the best that we know how we turn our faces towards you we open our hearts we open our ears and our minds to who you are Jesus and the price you paid on that cross so father we pray all these things in your mighty name in the name of Jesus Christ and everyone said amen you guys enjoy the rest of the service Hey Akuo Church, it's great to be with you once again for week 10 of services. We are continuing in this series called Learn 2. In this entire series, we will be doing a deep dive of the four L's of Akuo. Now the four L's of Akuo are an explanation of how we will bring people into community with Jesus and one another. The ways we will bring people into community with Jesus and one another are by listening to God, loving people, leading by empowering, and linking to our community. We're in the first part of our series, which is focusing on listening to God. Our hope is that by the time this section of this series is done, you will have a great idea on how to listen to God's voice. Here at Akuo Church, we believe that anyone can hear from God. Now for me, I need to hear from God all the time. I mean, obviously, I need to hear from God for like just normal life stuff, you know, just making my way through it. I need him to talk to me about how to just like make it through this world without messing anything up too badly because if it were up to me, I would be an absolute wreck. So I need him for like basic stuff, right? Uh, but not only that, we are putting together services for you guys every single week, which can be a lot. So just to give you an idea, each sermon that, that I'll preach will go about 25 minutes, you know, if, if I'm keeping good time. And within that sermon, I'm writing anywhere between four and 5,000 words. And those four to 5,000 words don't just like come from my brain. I'm not like this fantastic genius in writing or whatever. Uh, there's so much reading and research to be done to make sure that I'm teaching you guys the right stuff. So four to 5,000 words is like 20, 30 hours of work sometimes. Uh, not only that, I have an organization that I'm running alongside with Abel. We have folks that need counseling throughout the week. And not only that, but I have two kids I'm at home with right now while my wife is back in her office and we're trying to get school going and all kinds of fun stuff. And there are so many thoughts and ideas that are floating around my head at any time. So when I sit down to write a sermon, I'm getting pulled in a lot of directions. And I have a lot of ideas that I wanna do in the talk. So how do I figure this out? How do I calm my brain down enough to hear from God? How do I keep my thoughts from spinning around all over the place? Well, normally, I'll pray. And I'll listen to some worship music. And this process actually reminds me of Psalm 46. There it says, God is our refuge and strength always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and their kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious works of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shields with fire. 
Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's army is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. In this, you see how it works for the psalmist. At the start of it, it's all about God and how awesome he is. And in these words, I believe they are worshiping God. The psalmist goes on about how great God is and how he will protect their city. In this, they have ultimate confidence that God will be the protector of their city of Jerusalem. It's only after all this that you see something happen. God responds. Not only does God respond, but he responds in agreement. Now, God doesn't say, yes, you nailed it, exactly, ditto, I'll I'll protect you. No, but God explains how much greater he is than any nation. He explains that he will be honored throughout the entire world. Not only that, but when you get into the Psalms, you have to understand that this section of the book, these were songs, specifically worship songs. They would sing these songs in the temple at Jerusalem where all the folks of Jewish faith would show up and worship. So with this, I see a little formula breaking out, and that leads me to the big idea for today. If you only remember one thing about this message today, I want it to be this. Focus on the Father. Focus on the Father. I think that we can look at the Bible and see that for us to start hearing from God, we need to focus on Him. We need to take our eyes off the world, We need to take our eyes away from the fire. We need to take our eyes off the politics. We need to take our eyes off the pandemic. And we need to focus on Him. When we can focus on Him, we can hear Him better than ever before. Guys, this idea, it isn't rocket surgery. It's a simple idea. The application, however, can be a little bit tougher. And yes, I I meant to say rocket surgery. And for some of you, you might be like, well... I don't have headphones to listen to some worship. I'm not allowed to to like listen to music at work. Or what if I can't remember the lyrics to all these songs? You know, I need to like see them in front of me. Or what if I have no musical ability and I sing like a teenage boy going through puberty? You know, you know, like you got that cracking going on there. It's not very good. Well, if you can't do musical worship for whatever reason, you're in luck. Worship can be so much more than that. That's why I have our worship leader, Abel Ortega, coming back to explain what worship is much further. Hey, Akuo, we meet again. And I have to say, it feels super weird to not have my guitar in front of me, not just because I don't know what to do with my hands right now, but mostly because I don't have the barrier between me and people. The camera's not enough, I feel, because just in case you weren't aware, I'm actually like 99.9% introverted and super shy, so I feel ridiculously exposed and defenseless right now. But this is actually the exact setup I want because I'm going to talk to you guys about worship. Now, there's a whole ton of things that we can talk about regarding worship, so I'm going to steal a line from Pastor Humby. We could do a whole series on just this topic, but I'm not exactly prepared for that just yet, and you guys probably aren't either. So I'm just here to give us a good working definition of what worship is. Worship is something that most people has, have heard of, or at least have a bit of an idea of what it is. If you've gone to church at least once, you've probably heard the word worship a million times in just that one service. And since we talk it about, about it so much, it's probably pretty important for us to know what it means, right? Well, as your worship leader here, I want to make sure that we're pointed in the right direction. So what exactly is worship? Well. Worship is when we sing songs together at the beginning of service, you know, like we just did a little while ago. That's worship, even when it's over a screen. But, but, but really, that happens to be the main way we think or refer to worship when we hear about it. Worship is music. Whenever you hear someone say that they love to worship, they usually mean that they love to sing songs at church. And somehow the worship leader always has a guitar and the worship team is full of musicians, Worship is music. It's not a coincidence, is it? I get it. That's the same misconception that I believed years ago when I first started going to church too. That worship is music. But I need you guys to listen to me right now. I want to make it extremely clear, Akuo, especially for those of us who think we can't worship because we don't play an instrument or sing 
or have any musical talent whatsoever. Worship is not a song, it's a self. Worship is not singing, but singing can be worship. Just like praying can be worship, and reading the Bible can be worship, and taking care of our kids, and tithing, and working hard, and loving people can all be worship. So many different things can be worship. And it's because worship is a big term that can envelop so many different things. Think of it this way. It's kind of like saying that all tacos are food, but not all food is tacos. Uh, which, now that I think about it, that's kind of sad. But luckily, here in San Antonio, that might not be that true. Um, you know, we got a lot of tacos here, but just go with me for a second. Food is a huge broad term, and tacos is a specific kind of food, just like singing is a specific kind of worship. In fact, our English translation of the Bible takes so many different words from the original language the Bible was written in and simply translates them to worship. I don't have time to go through all of them, but there are specific words for worshiping by playing music, by worshiping with your hands raised up, even when, for when you're worshiping and spinning around in a circle. Yes, the original language is that rich and descriptive, but we kind of just call it all worship. So some of you guys might be going, all right, Abel, you said all of that and I just got more lost. What is worship then? I'm glad you asked. Let's start defining worship by taking two really important words for worship and the two really interesting places that they can be found in scripture. Here's the first word I want us to learn. Shaha. Try pronouncing that. Shaha. If you need some help, imagine that you just caught someone doing something sneaky, but you're brushing your teeth and you still have all the toothpaste in your mouth. That's the only way you can get that really authentic Jewish accent that we're looking for. Shaha. Shaha. <laughs> so shaha is a Hebrew word used in the Old Testament that we will simply translate to worship. It is one of the most prominent words used for worship and it literally means to bow down flat on the floor. So worship here means to lay down and surrender to God. And the first place we ever see this word for worship, to lay down and surrender, is in Genesis. And it's also the first time we see any word for worship used in the Bible. So here's some quick context for you. There's a man named Abraham who was to be the father of many nations, but he had no sons to carry on this purpose. So God blesses him with a son named Isaac when he was 100 years old. So clearly Isaac was a very special person and meant a great deal to Abraham and his purpose. And now we can read what happens when God calls Abraham to do something. All right, let's jump in. Genesis 22 verse 2 through 5. God tells Abraham, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. So quick pause here, guys. I don't know about you, but that part really gets me already because God is really reminding Isaac that he is his only son, whom he loves so much and means everything to him while still asking him to do this. Yet Abraham agrees and the next morning he goes up to the mountains with two servants and his beloved son Isaac, and he finds a place God was telling him about. So let's pick it back up with the conversation Abraham has right before he goes up. Stay here with the donkey, Abraham told the servants. The boy and I will travel a little farther. We will shaha there, we will worship there, and then we will come right back. Now, I'm not a parent, I don't have any kids, but I think the idea that people's children mean a lot to them would be kind of an understatement. I mean, could you imagine having dinner with your family after God told you this? Going around the table and asking how everyone's day went. You get to your son Isaac and you ask, Hey son, how was your day? Oh dad, it was amazing. I just love living and have so much I want to do and so many dreams and goals that I want to accomplish to make you proud. Thank you for always taking care of me, dad. You're the best. That's kind of rough. But God called Abraham to shaha, to worship, to lay down and surrender. And Abraham was going to literally lay down and surrender everything to him. 
the miracle child that he was blessed with, which also meant laying down and surrendering his fatherhood and his purpose. The calling to be the father of many nations that Isaac was supposed to fulfill. Not only that, he was also surrendering his nature to protect his family, his control of situations, his pride, everything. God was calling Abraham to worship him. And worship means to surrender. I don't think it's a coincidence that this is the introduction worship is given to us in the Bible. Because if you continue to read and study through it, you'll definitely find that worship isn't always as easy as simply singing a song. Worship is surrender. But I don't want to leave you hanging, so let me finish the story of Abraham and Isaac. Abraham ties and lays Isaac down in worship, in shaha, fully surrendered to God and about to sacrifice his own son, but an angel stops him and God provides a ram to sacrifice in Isaac's place which Abraham then does, and his worship is made complete. Worship means to surrender. But that's only half of what worship means. So let's move on to the second word I want us to learn. We're going to jump from the Old Testament and the first time the word worship is found in the Bible and go to the New Testament and the first time Jesus mentions worship in the Bible. That word is proskuneo. Proskuneo. Hopefully that's a little bit easier to say than shaha because proskuneo is a Greek word and it's used throughout the New Testament to mean worship. Its meaning translates to something along the lines of to kiss, but really the image that it is derived from is that of a dog licking its master's hand out of love. I know that's kind of weird, you know, a dog kiss, worship, and Jesus. How does this all connect? Well, let me give you some scripture for it. The first time we hear Jesus mention Jesus, in human form mentioned worship is in Matthew 4. I'll set this up for you too. This happens right after Jesus is baptized. The Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights where he is tempted by the devil three times. And this is the third and final way Jesus is tempted while in the wilderness. Matthew 4 verse 8 through 11. Next the devil took Jesus to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. I will give it all to you, he said, if you kneel down and worship me. Be gone, Satan, Jesus told him, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. Now, did you catch that? In this passage, you see the kneeling down, the shaha part of worship, the laying down and surrendering. And now you're seeing the proskuneo part of it too the kissing of a master's hand when the devil tempts Jesus to worship him. And this is a huge part of worship that I need us all to comprehend with everything that we are. Worship is always happening. Worship never stops. The laying down and surrendering never, ever stops. But that doesn't mean that we're always worshiping God. You see, Jesus here was tempted to worship but he was tempted to worship the wrong thing. And Jesus rebukes the wrong thing by declaring how we must worship the Lord our God and serve only him. We are to proskuneo, to kiss the hand of the master, to serve the master, to love the master. Whether you know it or not, we are all worshiping right now, but is it directed to the right master, the Lord our God? The devil tried to get Jesus to worship him and the world instead of God. And that is obviously the wrong thing. But worshiping the wrong thing doesn't always look like bowing down to a red devil holding a pitchfork. More often than not, it looks a lot more like laying down and surrendering to serve money, power, pleasure, a famous idol, a government, a sense of security, a sense of importance, a sense of success. It can even look like serving our own theology and our own religion above God himself. We can be in church singing worship songs and still be kissing the wrong master's hand. Jesus' response to laying down and surrendering to the wrong thing was to point us to serve the right person. So let's look at our definition of worship again. But this time, let's add Jesus' answer to it. So now, worship is surrendering and serving God out of love. That is the complete definition I want us to have, Akuo. 
we have the shaha, the surrender. Now we have the proskuneo part of it too. The kiss on our master's hand. The master that we serve out of love. Worship is way more than a song. It's a self. A self of surrendering and serving our God. Worship is a self that lays down and surrenders our plans, surrenders our ideas, our control, our lives down to serve our master, the Lord, our God. So let me tie this all up nicely with the scripture to encourage us. Read Romans 12, verse one and two with me. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Worship isn't a song. It's a self. Worship is surrendering and serving God out of love. We exist to be living sacrifices that please God. That is our true and proper worship. And when we surrender and serve God out of love, when we worship, we will learn and align ourselves with God's will for us, which we know is for our good. Worship helps us to focus in on God and His plans for us. When we lay down and surrender everything to Him, we can more completely serve His will. So Okuo, the more we worship, the more clearly He speaks to us. All right, thanks Abel for the breakdown. So we can see, focus on the Father through worship. Remember, worship is surrendering and serving God out of love. So what can you do to worship? Literally anything. You could be at work. You could be driving down the street. You could be cutting your grass. You could be hanging out with your family. It doesn't matter. You can surrender yourself to God and serve Him out of love anywhere. It doesn't have to be with a song or a poem or a sermon. I want you all to know that you can be able to hear from God every time you need Him. I want you guys to know that you can do that. And you can even hear from Him at times that you don't need Him. And you just want to spend time with Him. For that, I want you to focus on the Father. And you see that exact thing happening in the book of Ephesians. Here, the Apostle Paul is writing to the city of Ephesus and the surrounding area to give you guys some context. This was a place that was ruled by the believers of pagan gods. One pagan god stood above all others, all others in that area though, Artemis. You see, her temple was found in the city of Ephesus and it was considered to be one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. So it wasn't just like a tiny temple, it was ridiculous and known around the world. And there in the temple, people would sit and worship the god Artemis. They would sing songs to her. They would sell goods with her image on it. As a matter of fact, most of the silversmiths in the area of Ephesus were in business because people would buy Artemis statues and coins from them. She dominated the area. The people surrendered themselves and served Artemis. So Paul went and preached the gospel. And people's lives were changed incredibly. So much so that all of these new Christians stopped buying all the trinkets from the silversmiths. And the silversmiths rioted against Paul and these new Christians. Now, sometime after, Paul put a letter out into circulation in this area to help lead these new Christians in how they should be living their lives. And one of the sections focused on something we have been talking about, focusing on the Father. So there in Ephesians, it says, make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, essentially what Paul is telling the Ephesians and us today is that we need to make the most of our lives in these days of evil. We shouldn't be acting thoughtlessly, but we need to understand what the Lord wants us to do. We need to focus on the Father. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and worshiping. We need to be singing songs and making music to the Lord in our hearts. Now, just take a second and imagine that. Imagine what making music to the Lord 
with your heart looks like. It doesn't matter how bad of a singer you are. You can make the most beautiful music to the Lord in your heart. Then at the end of it all, give thanks to the Father in the name of Jesus. So to fully give thanks to God, we have to do it through the name of Jesus, which makes sense. It was Jesus' sacrifice. Jesus is laying down his life for us that gave us so many things. It forgave all of our sins. It made up for all the ways we've messed up in our lives. It made up for the, all the crappy ways we have treated people. It made up for all of that. It also gave us access to an eternity in heaven. It gave us the ability to hang out with God for all of time. Not only that, it gave us the Holy Spirit. It gave us God living within us. We can be filled with the Spirit when we are focused on the Father. When we are focused on the Father, we can be surrendering ourselves to Him and serving others for Him. In other words, we want to listen to God and then we want to love the people around us. Because in addition to having an eternity in heaven, we can now help bring how heaven operates to the world around us every single day. If this is something that you would like to do, the first step towards that is surrendering yourself to God. And you do that by believing in Jesus. So here's what I want us to do in a few seconds. I'm going to ask us all to pray together. For some of you, this might be your first time praying to Jesus, and that is amazing. If you do this, I want you to know that in Scripture, Jesus says, all of heaven will be celebrating you, which is pretty nice. Now, if you have already started your relationship with Jesus, this can just be a time of refocusing. So let's all pray this simple prayer together, because at Akuo Church, you always have a community praying with you. So just go ahead and bow your head and pray something like this. Jesus, I'm here before you now, and I want you to know that I believe in you. Thank you for giving up your life for me, even though I don't deserve it. I give thanks to you for everything. Today, I invite you to take over my life. Amen. Now, if you just prayed that prayer, I want you to do something that might be a little out of your comfort zone. I want you to type into the chat, I believe. So just type those two words into the chat, I believe. Now I want you to know that I'm so proud of you. God is so proud of you. All of heaven is proud of you. Remember, all of heaven is celebrating the decision you just made. All of heaven is throwing a huge party because you just crossed that line of faith. And I want you to do the same thing now. As we see people write, I believe in the chat, the next response to that should be excited emojis, maybe some confetti or some firecrackers or like, you know, one of those. Uh, and if you're not up on your emoji game, just type in like, I celebrate you. And if you don't know how to go into the chat and say something, just out loud, be like, I celebrate you. And, and you, you can just send that prayer along uh, through the air and, and they'll get it. Now, if you've been a believer, whether it's been for the last five decades or just the last five seconds, like it just happened right now, and you want to shift your focus from your world onto the Father, I want you to pray this prayer along with me. Pray something like this. Bow your heads and pray this. Father, thank you for who you are and how you love me. Right now, make yourself so clear to me. Make your voice be one that I recognize. Father, let me hear you in the best way possible. I ask that you would help me worship you. I ask that you would remind me to surrender myself before you and to serve you out of love. Let my ability to surrender and serve you grow 100-fold so that everyone that sees me will actually see you. I love you, Father. And we pray all of these things in the mighty, beautiful, and amazing name of Jesus. Amen. Well, guys, thank you for being a part of our service here at Akuo. If you need anything at all, don't hesitate to message, message us on social media platforms, or you can contact us on our, by going to our website, akuo.church. That's A-K-O-U-O dot church. Also, since we are a totally digital church right now, you guys can help us move digitally. There are a few very easy ways that you can do it. The first thing you can do is to share this video on your social media, or you can just send the link to someone that you know that needs to hear this message. 
Another thing you can do is like our social media or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also listen to, rate, and subscribe to our audio podcast. Now to find the podcast, all you have to do is search for Akuo, that's A-K-O-U-O on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or SoundCloud. By doing this, you will help us get these messages out to more people than we can ever imagine. Now next, I wanna talk about how we practice generosity here at Akuo. What we do is practice the biblical method of giving called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering to the storehouse, which is your local church. We believe that when you trust God with anything in your life, there's a blessing. We believe that it's the same with your finances. Now, I'm not saying that because you tithe, you're gonna end up with like the newest iPhone that hasn't even come out yet that can like text, make calls, has a million apps and like can teach you how to fly. Uh, but you will receive a blessing. You will receive the blessing of surrendering your finances to God and serving Him out of love. When you do this, I promise you that you will see God work in it. Just like you do any other time you trust God with anything, being able to receive that blessing is something we don't want you to miss out on. And you can tithe here at Akuo by going to our website, akouo.church and clicking on the giving link. Now, speaking of links, we want to continue to link to our community, like we've been saying over the last few weeks. Now, we have been already been getting some ideas on how to continue to link to our community, but we can't do it without you. You guys are more linked to all kinds of different communities than we could ever hope to be. So please contact us and let us know where we can link to our community. Go to our social media, go to our website, email me, humby.servera at akuo.church and hit me up. Now, one last thing. Every Wednesday night, we have a Bible study through Zoom. It's a time where we all get together online, sing some worship music, read through the Bible, and pray with one another. Guys, I can't tell you how much fun I have at this Zoom Bible study every single week, and we would love to see you there. The link for the Zoom meeting is posted in all of our social media right now. Okay, guys, that's our 10 service. We are now in double digits. What a huge milestone. I want you to know that I love you and I'm praying for you, each and every one of you, all week long. And let me just pray for you one last time here before we go. So just, Jesus, I just ask that you would bless all the people that are watching online, uh, that are listening to this uh, via podcast. I just pray that you're with each and every one of them right now and that you are allowing them to see how they can surrender better to you and how they can serve you out of love better than they ever have before. Lord, we ask that your voice is so clear, so just indescribably perfect to them, that they would know it was you, and they couldn't deny it in any way, shape, or form. We love you, Lord, and we pray this for all the people that are watching and listening right now. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, that's it. We will see you on Wednesday.